Hello, this is uh, Chaplain Bob, and this is part two of Dragons and Owls in the Bible. In part one, I covered all the verses where dragons and owls are mentioned in the Bible, and I pretty much showed you what the Bible said about dragons. So this part is going to be about the owls. I don't like making the videos lo much longer than an hour, so I'm you know, making this a part two. Now, when you read about owls in the Bible, in the Levitical books, which is the laws for the Levite priesthood, they were one of the 12 tribes. The Levites were the beta priests. They were the most, ones that were supposed to lead Israel in the laws of God. They were the priests. They were the ones that Moses was a Levite. He gave Israel the law. And they were to be a priest. They were the ones that were supposed to lead God's people in the instruction of God's laws, as opposed to Judah. Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. They were to be the civil rulers. So the Levites were sort of like our Supreme Court, and the Judah was supposed to be like the president, if you were in the United States anyways. If you were in England... I guess it would be different. I don't know. The Judah would be like the king or queen, and uh, I guess parliament would be like the Levites. I don't know. I don't know the uh, government in the UK that well, so what can I tell you? But the first time we read about owls in the Bible, it is a forbidden animal to eat. It was considered unclean. Now, owls are an interesting bird. They are a nocturnal hunter, which means they hunt at night. They have excellent night vision. And they sleep during the day and they hunt at night, sort of like vampires, if you believe that sort of thing. And Hollywood, right? They, they... I remember once a song, what was it? The Freaks Come Out at Night, Houdini? I don't know. So, owls hunt at night. And as I understand it, owls, when they fly, they make virtually no noise at all. They're quiet. You know, a mouse will hear nothing. And then all of a sudden, an owl's talons, its nails, its claws will be ripped into the back, its back and into its neck. And let's face it, rodents is what owls eat a lot of. That's probably their main part of their diet. Now, when owls are mentioned, they're mentioned quite a bit with dragons. Dragons and owls. Now, I found that kind of interesting. And reason being is there is a group called Bo Bohemian Grove. Yeah, there's a group where all the uh, rich, and powerful, and the political leaders go to. It's in, I believe it's in California. Matter of fact, I'm going to have to look some things up because I don't want to be called a liar. And a false prophet and false teacher and a lot of other things. So let's take a look. All right. Uh, the Bohemian Grove is a 2,700-acre campground loaded, located at 20601 Bohemian Avenue in Monte Rio, California. Uh, it's That's north of San Francisco, San Francisco um, California. And uh, it's known as the Bohemian Club. Now, this is off of Wikipedia, okay? And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of uh, members that are very rich and powerful and political people and business people and, you know, all that good stuff. It's a private club, members only. You can invite you can invite guests, but you know, got to be a member. 
and it's uh, in the middle of redwood trees. And it's got a camp, different camps. One of them's called the Owl's Nest. Okay. Another part's called the Lost Angels. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Lost Angels. Angels that are lost. Uh, that doesn't mean they, they're out in the woods and they, and, and they don't know where they're at. Um, you know, there's a difference between being saved and being lost, right? Uh, under symbolism and rituals, we read, and I quote, quote, since the founding of the club, the Bohemian Grove's mascot has been an owl, symbolizing knowledge. A 30-foot or 9 meters hollow owl statue made of concrete over steel support stands at the head of the lake in the grove. This owl shrine was designed by sculptor and two-time club president Haig Patagian and constructed in the late 1920s. Uh, since 1929, the Owl Shrine has served as the backdrop of the yearly cremation of care ceremony. Cremation of care ceremony? Uh, which is an an, uh, annual theatrical production written, produced, and performed by and for members of the Bohemian Club. Um, wow. Unquote. Let's see, it, uh, what is that? Uh, the cremation of care. Oh, okay, and uh, let's call, uh, it's called an exercising of the demon to ensure the success of the ensuing two weeks. And it takes place in front of it, the owl. Hmm. Isn't that wonderful? The exorcising of the demon. You know, perhaps you've heard of the, uh, the thing about the wise old owl. You know, uh, where does that come from? Popular culture, television, Hollywood. So, why are owls tied in with dragons? I mean, you know, it, it kind of makes you wonder. Now, one of the things is, why do these people... They, they do these weird rituals and reminiscent it is of satanic activities. And why do they call it Bohemian Grove? Uh, the word grove in the Bible is never a good thing. Now, Bohemia was a an area in what is now the Czech, Czechoslovakian Republic, but it also has reference to somebody that has uh, an informal or unconventional social habits, uh, people that are like artists, writers, musicians. That's something along there, uh, along those lines. The um, Bohemians were a tied in with the German part of what is now the Czech Republic. You heard of Czechoslovakia? Well, the Sudetenland was uh, a lot of Germans there. And uh, after World War I, uh, the Allies took, well, they, they took Europe and carved it up into different areas. And they gave part of Germany to Poland. And, of course, Poland and Germany fought over certain areas for years. You know, I, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. Uh, a lot of history has been rewritten. But, um, but let's read about what the Bible says about grove, the grove and groves. In Deuteronomy 16 and verse 21, Thou shalt not plant thee a grove, of any tree or trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Isn't that interesting? When they when you make when you have an altar for the Lord, you don't plant a grove of trees near there. And this is in Deuteronomy, which is, you know, books of Moses, which are among the oldest books in the Bible. Probably the among the very oldest books in the Bible. 
um, in Judges 6 and verse 25. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal, or Baal, that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. See, groves, uh, a grove of trees, that's a group of trees, uh, was always tied in with Satanism. You know, you've probably uh, heard of sacred oaks. Well, that's witchcraft and witches and sorcerers and warlocks and Satanism. Uh, let's see, verse 26. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Hmm. So, the Lord said, cut down the grove and use the word, uh, wood to, to burn a sacrifice, a bullock, unto the Lord. Okay. Uh, let's see. 1 Kings 15 and verse 13. And also Mecha, his mother, even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. Ah, here we go. 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 33. And Ahab... Ahab. You know who Ahab was married to? Jezebel. Ring a bell? Jezebel. Ring a bell? All right, never mind. And Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of, Ang uh, Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow. So Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Mm, that's not good, huh? So, uh, are we getting the idea of making a grove isn't uh, good? You know? Uh, 2 Kings 17 and verse 16. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. When they, it says they left the commandments, it doesn't mean they... They left their Bible at, in, at home. No, no. When it means they left the commandments, it means they broke all of them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, idols, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven, that's the fallen angels, and served Baal, B-A-A-L. Baal, what became... It means Lord, but it, it, it became so associated with Satanism that God says, don't call me Baal anymore. Don't do it. 2 Kings 21, verse 3, For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and serve them. The host of heaven, the fallen angels, people. That's who he was serving. Uh, 21 and verse 7. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, in, his ha in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. So he put a graven image of an idol a graven image of the grove, and put it in the Lord's house. Hmm, not good, right? Um, in Exodus 34, verse 13, the Lord said, But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down, cut down their groves. Huh, Deuteronomy 7, verse 5, Thus but thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars. The altar to Satan, right? Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 3.
but ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, gods, plural, and destroy the names of them out of that place. Hmm. Judges, chapter 3 and verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil, evil in the sight of the, of the Lord, and forgat the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Oh, yeah. So, groves. I, you know, I could read, uh, let's see, how many times? Uh, grove appears 17 times, and... Uh, and there's like 41 different verses that um, you could read this stuff, okay? I mean, there's grove, and then there's groves, plural. And uh, groves appears 24 times. It's never associated with anything good. So what is Bohemian grove? Not something good, right? So you got to understand something. The rich and powerful probably go to these private clubs where, you know, they rub elbows and they're like, hey, you know, you, you've you got a, uh, a this kind of a business. And I know this guy over here that's got that kind of a business. Maybe you two can get together and, you know, work out some kind of business arrangement. You help him. He helps you. You both. We all make money, right? And, and a lot of times that's what these people come together thinking that they're going to do. But what they don't realize is, you know, they think when they first go there, maybe they they think they're just having a little, you know, guy fun, you know. But really, there's a satanic influence that runs throughout the whole ceremony. In Leviticus 17 and verse 7, and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. You know, what's a devil? I mean, it's just a D with a with evil after it. Evil. E-V-I-L with a D in front of it. Devil. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statue forever unto them throughout their generations. Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods, plural, to gods whom they knew not, new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Psalms 106, verse 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Huh. You know, there's a one of the probably the number one thing that Jesus cured in the New Testament was people that were possessed with devils. In Matthew 8, verse 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. You've heard of demonic. Uh, possession. Well, uh, a demon is just basically the Greek expression for devils. And basically it means little god. Demons, little gods, because well, that's basic. Basically they're, they're sacrificing unto gods, but they're the false gods. They're not the god of the Bible, the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, 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 no. When the evening, when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Hmm. In Matthew 10 and verse 8, Jesus told his disciples, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So, 
You know, in Mar uh, Mark 1 and verse 39, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. I mean, you know, we, I could just, I could just keep reading this stuff. In Mark 16, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe? I do. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. I believe that Christians, true Christians, real ones, not these church people, I believe that real Christians have the power to cast out devils. But the only problem is, if the people that you cast the devil out of don't get saved, they end up in worse shape than they were in the beginning. You know, in Luke chapter 11, in verse 24, we read what happens when a person is has a, a devil cast out of him, but he doesn't get saved. You know, there's people that will tell you that uh, Christians can be possessed of devils. I just, I don't see that in the Bible. I, I don't believe it because I don't see it in the Bible. I don't see how a Christian could be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and be possessed of a devil. I, I just, I don't believe it. I don't see it in the Bible. People always say, well, yeah, they can do this, that, and the other. Well, yeah, show me in the Bible. And they can't. They don't. And they won't. Because it's not there. But Luke chapter 11, verse 24, we read the following. When the unclean spirit, that's a devil, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. And finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. You see, now this is Jesus speaking. When somebody gets a devil cast out of him, they got to get saved, or they're going to end up being, you know, not just one devil there he's going to have eight of them he's going to have the one the original one plus seven more and and the end is going to be worse than the beginning so it's important for them to get saved i mean you know and i'll tell you what i honestly believe these people that go to these places like bohemian grove and what have you i honestly believe that these rituals are calling upon devil, demonic spirits to come and indwell these people. At the end, when we finally get into the kingdom, I bet you you're going to find that almost every single member of Congress, uh, most of the presidents that we've had in recent years, uh, Supreme Court, political leaders, I mean, local leaders, you're going to find out that they were possessed of devils. You know, there's a reason why the Bible said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. There's a reason for that, people. In Exodus 22 and verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not suffer or allow. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. The Bible also says that if a man lieth with a man as he lieth with a woman, to put him to death. Maybe I should read it. Um, all right, Leviticus 20 and verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. I mean, you know, that's pretty plain. Let me tell you what's happening. 
these people, ah, it's, it's sickening. These Satanists, these witches, these sodomites are in political power. You want to homeschool your kids in a Christian environment? They have child protective services come into your house, declare you an unfit parent, kidnap your children at gunpoint with the police standing there, and if you oppose them, they kill you. They will kill you in front of your own children. Then they will take your orphaned child and place them with sodomites, lesbians, and witches. You know, in Australia, there was a couple of sodomites that adopted a boy. I believe he was five. They raped the boy to death. He died of anal bleeding and trauma. And the outcry was pretty, you know, it was pretty out up there, right? So what did the legislature do? Did they ban sodomite ab uh, adoptions? No. They passed a law. If you use the word sodomite and pedophile in the same sentence, you can go to jail, prison. Yeah. How's that? Who do you think passed these laws? There, uh, there was a Georgia state representative, a woman, I forget her name. She found out that one year in Georgia, one year alone in Georgia, 300 and something children who were taken by Child Protective Services vanished. What happened to them? She uh, evidently... The police say, well, she was murdered by her husband, then her husband committed suicide. Convenient, huh? 300 kids disappeared. One state, one year. Happened in, uh, where I live here in Florida. There's been several children that just vanished. They don't know what happened to them. What happened to these? What happening to these kids? They're sacrificing children to Satan. In Leviticus chapter 2 and verse uh, 20 and verse 2, again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed, that's children, any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Um in 2 Kings 23 and verse 10, And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. See, they were burning their children alive on an altar to Satan. Only they called him Molech. How much of that is going on in the United States? I don't know. But I tell you what, when 300 children disappear in the state of Georgia alone, uh, there's 49 other states, and you're just talking one year. And, you know, you don't hear about this stuff in the news. I'm telling you, people, it's Satanism is rampant. And you're going to find out, when, when you finally make the kingdom, you're going to find out that most of the, most, the majority of the political leaders and all businessmen, the you know the big the big money people you're gonna find out they're, they're probably possessed of devils, which is why the Lord told you. Don't let the witches live. Look at look at Hollywood. I mean you know Harry Potter and and vampirism, everything on the TV. If it isn't sex, it's violence. If it isn't violence, it's the occult. I mean, that's ninety percent the garbage on TV nowadays. And this is what they're teaching your children. The wise old owl. Bohemian Grove. And this is just one tiny little piece of the puzzle. <sighs> and it's everywhere, people. Um, it's happening in Europe. There was a thing in the paper where they found out they've been running these orphanages because orphans don't have family asking, well, what happened to my children? They don't have them asking because they don't have any family. 
the um, ritual abuse, Pizzagate, some people call it here. But uh, they were allegations that the heads of Scotland Yard up in the UK, that's sort of like the head of the FBI in the United States, that they were involved. You know, in, in San Francisco, the uh, chief of police was, a was I think, one was a sodomite and the other one was a lesbian. I mean, let's face it. You think they would have a problem taking a child away from a Christian couple and, and placing them with a sodomite? Of course not. You know, people, it's real. It's getting really serious. I truly believe within the next 20 years or so, I, I will be surprised if they don't start openly killing Christians. It's sickening. It really is. Because the Bible tells you what to do with these people. And the churches, they explain everything away. Because why? Because they work for the devil. Turn on TBN and the 700 Club. You're going to tell me those people represent Christ? No. Those people, only thing they care about is money. And I'll tell you what, I bet you 90-something percent of those people were possessed of devils, too. And, you know, the devils are uh, they are smart. Now, they couldn't openly fight against Christians back in the early days, so they went into hiding. And, and they turned the devil into a guy with a red suit with horns and a tail and a pitchfork. And, and everybody laughs at that. Ah, ha, 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 you stupid Christians believe in a devil with a forked tongue and a, a pointy tail and horns and a pitchfork. But really, they're working behind the scenes. And they promise them everything in this world. In the book of Isaiah, we read the following in chapter 13, verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Isn't that interesting? Now, in Matthew chapter 4, in verse 1, we read, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, hmm, if you are the Son of God, right? If thou be the Son of God, command these that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written. You know, that's a good idea. When, the, when Satan tempts you, it's a good idea to quote him scripture. Of course, Satan can misquote scripture, but, you know. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle, pinnacle of the temple. And what's a holy city? Jerusalem. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. You know, there must God must have uh, when you read the first chapter of Job, uh, Satan made a sort of like a bet with God and said, you know, uh, if, if you let me take away everything you've given Job, he'll curse you to your face. 
And uh, God said, well, go ahead. Just you can't take his life, basically, I'm paraphrasing. But I kind of wonder if did God make that kind of a, a bet in the Garden of Eden that if he could trick Adam and Eve, you know, because God said thou shall not, you know, stay away from the tree of good and evil. Uh, you know, I don't know. The Bible, there's a lot of things the Bible are silent upon, and and I'm not saying read between the lines, but you kind of wonder if there's some kind of a, you know, if God made a bet with Satan. Because here it is, Jesus is, you know, he said, I'll give you, Satan said to Jesus, I'll give you all these things if you'll fall down and worship me. Well, how can they be Satan's? Jesus didn't say, oh, no, you liar. These kingdoms aren't yours to give. He didn't say that. What, is he, what did he say? Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So evidently, God gave Satan a kingdom probably for a certain amount of time. I don't know. You know, the Bible is not clear on it. I don't know. Then came, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So, maybe God gave Satan a 6,000 year lease. I don't know. But maybe, you know, the lease is getting ready to expire. Christ is going to come back and reclaim his throne. All I know is the Christians have done a terrible, terrible job, especially in the last couple hundred years. In Matthew 5 and verse 13, Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. You know, salt is good for killing bad germs, bad bacteria. Salt is used to preserve meats and, and, and uh, food to keep it from spoiling. You know, and it makes food taste good. And Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, you know, if it, if it loses its flavoring, you know, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Well, that's what the church has become. The church isn't the salt of the earth anymore. It's lost its flavor. What good is it? It's going to be thrown out into the ground and, and to be walked all over by under the foot of men. Let's face it, people. The uh, church has failed. It's been infiltrated by huge armies of Satanists. I think to close this out, we'll read the first chapter of Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Called. Isn't that a interesting thing? You know, the called of God. You know... Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation that was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Do you know what turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness is? Those are people that will tell you that grace is a license to sin. Those are the people that tell you, don't worry about repenting. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If, you wanna, if you're a hitman for the mafia, praise Jesus. Just keep doing what you're doing and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to be saved. You know, I've said that so many times and, and there's people that will tell you, oh, just repent of your unbelief and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, to repent means to turn away. From what? Turn away from unbelief? Well, yeah, you're supposed to turn away from your unbelief, but you're also supposed to turn away from sin. That's what lasciviousness is. Lasciviousness doesn't mean unbelief. Turning the grace, uh, you know, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You know, maybe I need to define what lasciviousness is, just so you get the full meaning of what it really stands for. It means looseness. You ever heard of the thing about a, a loose woman? Think about a whore, okay? Um... Uh, Irregular indulgence of animal desires, wantonness, lustfulness, a tendency to excite lust and promote irregular indulgences. You've ever, uh, you know, when they talk about a loose woman, I mean, you know, that's what, uh, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, lascivious means loose, wanton, lewd, L-E-W-D, lustful. Um, you know, it, it has lascivious. It's, it means, you know, it has reference to sexual, bad sexual. Not We're not talking about a husband and wife. So, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And they're doing that now. They're, they don't even use the, want to use the name Jesus anymore. They want to, uh, Yeshua, whoever that is. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. You know, what you believe will dictate what you do. I mean, let's face it, you know, you know, if, if your actions are proof of what you believe, you know, the Lord saved the people out of Egypt, but they wouldn't follow the Lord. So he, did, he ended up destroying them. There was only, I think, two people. In 40 years they wandered in the wilderness, there was only two people that survived. I think it was Moses and Joshua, if memory serves me correctly. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Where, where was their habitation? Heaven. He hath reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. What day is that? the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, lasciviousness, people, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. 
but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. What was the way of Cain? Murder. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. Balaam was a prophet of the Lord, and he was bought. They bought him. Just like Judas Iscariot. Judas sold Jesus for what? 20 pieces of silver? Well, Balaam was bought off too. He'd rather have the gold, the gold of the wicked king, than have the ways of the Lord. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. And who was Cory? Cory was, um, he opposed Moses. I mean, God picked Moses to lead Israel. And Cory um, opposed Moses, which, and the earth opened, opened up, swallowed Cory and his family and those that were following him, and closed up on him, killed him. Think about that. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees who, whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. Can you say ungodly? And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. Who would walk after their own ungodly lusts? These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You know, there was a, an old elderly godly couple that pulled this one out of the fire. I, I tell you what, I, I imagine those people are with the Lord now, but, uh, you know, it's, it's nice when you go witness to people and bring them to the Lord. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto them that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. You know, people, they're, uh, the first lie that Satan recorded was in the Garden of Eden when he told Eve, ye shall not surely uh, die, and he said that ye shall be as gods. Well, that's what they're promising people today. Ye shall be as gods. Don't believe it. Um, that position has already been filled and is not available. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, 
glory and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.